Check this out. Oh, this is the M3 Max MacBook Pro. I went for it. I'm trying to find the perfect machine for what I do. I bought the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, the base model with 18 gigs of RAM, 512 hard drive, because that was what the only thing that was available at the time. And it's been great. It's introduced me to the Apple ecosystem. I'm really happy using it. However, I started to notice the limitations when I was doing my video editing. And since I'm spending in Canadian, that's about $4,000 for that Pro, which is ridiculous, and it's not quite doing what I need it to do, I bumped up to this one, which cost almost $6,000. It's so much money. I need to know which one I'm gonna keep. So what I did today is, for your entertainment, I took some clips of me dancing. I, I, I used magic masks to remove the background and I'm gonna stack them all up to see how well these machines do. It's not something that I'm gonna do in every single video, but I love having that freedom to help tell the story. That's the whole point of buying a new computer for me is because with my old computers, my creativity was limited by what my hardware was capable of. With this, I wanna remove those shackles and soar with my storytelling. Do you know what I mean? So let's get into it. I'll show you how the M3 Pro does. I'll show you how the M3 Max does. I even have my three-year-old Windows machine with the dedicated graphics card that I'm gonna throw into the mix so we can see how well they all perform. And then after I go through it all, I'll give you my thoughts on what I'm gonna do moving forward and who this is for, who that is for. Let's go. All right, so I'm in the Magic Mask setting on the M3 Pro. I'm just gonna select myself in the middle of the clip Gonna to toggle the mask overlay, just add in the little missing bits. It really is a cool tool. And then I'm just gonna click the track to the beginning and to the end. Now here, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, tracking speed, seven frames per second, eight frames per second. It's maxing out at about nine, sometimes we'll hit 10 frames per second. So it takes on a you know less than 30 second video, about a minute and a half to put a mask on. Now, let's hop over to the M3 Max. So I do the same thing, in the middle of the clip, just now click track forward and backwards, and okay. So the speed is faster, 13, around 14 frames per second, Sometimes it goes up to and hovers around 15 frames per second. So again, about a minute here remaining. Now we're back over to the M3 Pro, and then we're back to the Max. So yeah, almost 50% almost faster. Here's the, what it plays like on the M3 Pro. I'm gonna stack all the clips up. I use the alpha outputs to eliminate the background once it was tracked, and here we go. Pretty smooth playback. This is all in 4K with no proxies, shooting in 10-bit in the XAVCSI format. Now, just to really see if we can start making this thing struggle on the M3 Pro, I'm gonna put on the four layers with the backgrounds over top of the ones with the magic masks, and let's see what happens. You know, it's pretty dang good. That's quite impressive. It's starting to show signs. You can see right above the video, the 33 frames per second there. It's definitely not quite a slideshow, but it's feeling the pressure. Now, if we pop over to the activity monitor, looks like the GPU and the, with OBS running, and let's see the RAM. Yeah, the RAM's not quite full. But it just, it's something feels like it's getting pushed. Yeah, the GPU looks like it's maxing out here. The CPU's at 147%, and I'm starting to see it struggle. So let's put some text over top of it, and let's see how it goes. You know, it's still running pretty good. Nice job, M3 Pro. I'm not usually gonna edit like this, but I love having the ability to do stuff like that. Now, let's go over on the M3 Max, which is on the top. I have put the M3 playback on the bottom just so that we can compare them. Now, it might be hard to tell, but the M3 Max on the top is just 
even more buttery smooth. I mean, it should be, right? Okay, so let's do the same test where I put those video clips underneath it just to make it push. And I mean, look at its scrub. It is scrubbing, it's on the top. So it's not dropping any frames at all. The bottom one definitely, oh, the M3 Pro definitely was feeling a little bit chunky, whereas the M3 Max, hey look, 200% CPU. I don't know what that means. The GPUs aren't being pushed nearly as hard because there's so many more cores. And with the memory, I'm sitting at around 26 gigs of RAM being used. It's so interesting that the other one was only using 16, doing the exact same stuff. Now, here we are, we're back onto the M3 Pro. I'm putting in the space background. And it's, it's playing back very nicely, but it's not buttery smooth. Now, if we go over to the Max, scrubbing on it, the, the effects for the text just loads up. Now this is back to the M3 Pro. You can see it's just, it does a really good job. I mean, what can I say? It, it, there's a big price point difference between the two of them and the fact, I mean, now you can really start to see it bogging down a little bit. But then when we switch back to the M3 Max, scrubbing is smooth, playback is smooth, no matter what I'm doing with it just pop over into full screen mode and it is just a nice treat to edit with. Now it struggled there for a split second and I get those blips. Now here's me working on them side by side. So I got the pro on the left here and it's, it's scrubbing nicely. But again, when I just, the moment I hit space, you can feel it. Whereas now I'm over on the M3 Max and it's just, it does what you want it to do when you wanted to do it. Let's go over to the Windows machine, just for fun. Here's me putting on the magic mask and 13, 14 frames per second. Oh my goodness. This thing is a little beast. 15 frames per second. On average, it was faster with the tracking than the max. But let's unplug it and see what happens. It's starting to drop. So we're at like a third of the speed that it initially was at when it was plugged in. And I'm on turbo settings in the armor crate as well. So when I, when this thing is unplugged, it is just brutal. So let's plug it back in and let's do the playback. Let's see if it can run those tests. Now this is just the original four without even stacking up anything, the space or the other layers underneath it. And it is editing on this in 4K without proxies. Okay, now let's put those layers underneath it like I did on the other computers on the Max. And I think it's breaking. Oh, and there's my wife. Hello, wifey. Yeah, um, it's just, I didn't do anything here. The computer is just locking up. It's not really even in the same league. Could not do this at all. Okay, now here's all of them. Let's, I hit play at basically the same time. We'll see the Max on the right is just going like a champ. The Windows one on the left started off pretty good and the Pro, I had to see if it was even working. Now, once it started working, it was running pretty well, but the Max on the right has just, right from when you open up the computer, right before I shot this clip, I just opened them right up. So now let's look at these two a little closer together, side by side. Okay, the scrubbing on the Max on the right looks good. Right away, it just starts playing instantly. Now with the Pro on the left, the scrubbing looks pretty good. It's not quite as good and it's a bit more jittery. It's not as smooth of playback, uh, which also means it's not as smooth when you're editing. When you're jumping around making lots of cuts when it's the videos are stacked like this, that's where it really makes a big difference. Now here's with the a little bit more effects with the text drop-ins and stuff. Again, the max on the right, just like a boss on the left, it's going pretty smooth as well. You know, during these tests, something that I didn't really get a chance to record because after I did all this, I was showing my wife and I think once it started to heat up a little bit more, the pro really started bogging out a lot more using these same tests. Once I started actually editing that footage, I really noticed the difference. So here's me just using normal daily usage. This is with the M3 Pro. 
kiddos playing some video games, I'm playing some Hearthstone, I'm doing some regular video editing without stacking them up just how I normally would for my talking head stuff. I'm bouncing between, I've got YouTube circle concert playing in the background. The speakers are great on this thing. It was awesome. Now this is me with the M3 Max doing the same thing, responding to comments, playing some Hearthstone, bouncing back and forth, doing some video editing. And in, in this case, they're both just great. If this is the kind of workflow that you have, there's definitely no need to shell out the extra money for the Max. The Pro does all this stuff and it works on the 4K footage like a boss. All right, let me hop over to my studio now and talk about my overall experience and what I recommend. These are some gnarly laptops. They are both great and don't feel much different in day-to-day -day usage. They both handle editing 4K 10-bit, no problem without proxies, and that's kind of insane. The batteries seem to last longer on the Pro in my opinion, but both are good. I was using high power mode for the tests. I did try using low power mode and it made the video editing worse. So for this test and how I use it, I didn't really compare those modes. However, even in the high power mode, the M3 Pro really couldn't quite handle the harder workload when I started pushing it. See, it's not that the Pro isn't good, it's that when it comes time to really push it, well, it's not the right tool for the job. I mean, you'd hope it would be for the price, but you can't really get your cake and to eat it too. You do get better battery though, which is nice. Oddly enough though, I never heard the fans with the Pro and with the Max, I hear them quite often. Will that affect longevity? Also the Max got way warmer. It just seems like it has a turbocharger under the hood and it just sucks back the power more. I'm sure that it does. The M3 Max really was the best to edit on, no question, and it should be for the price. Some more of the tests that I didn't get a chance to actually record when I was trying to show my wife the computer side by side, the Pro really did kind of start to fall apart. The Max was smooth like butter and the Pro just kind of turned a bit more. It would do all the footage and then it would kind of blip and blop a lot, which gets annoying and slows you down. And especially if you're trying to cut through footage like that. You could just make proxies on the Pro. It would be just fine. The older Windows machine, I was still really impressed with what the GPU can do when you're able to use it, but it definitely got smoked in the overall video editing comparison. Newer Windows machines are better, I'm sure, and hopefully I can compare them in the near future because I still enjoy the Windows ecosystem, but there's no denying that Apple is just easy and a treat to use, especially when you have multiple Apple products working together. I was just airdropping files back and forth between these MacBooks during the video. It was nice, easier than Windows. As a first time Apple buyer for both the computer and iPads, Apple makes it hard to figure out which is the right computer for you. And they make it very easy to just justify why you need the higher model than what you actually need. So what am I gonna do and what MacBook should you buy? As of this moment, I think the Pro with the lower RAM and the smaller hard drive is the wrong tool for me. I could probably get away with buying and using a Pro with 36 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive, but since my biggest priority is optimizing my video editing experience, I am leaning towards keeping the Max. I really like the battery on the Pro though. Buying expensive tech is hard. It seems like Intel is going to drop some big things right around the corner and nothing feels worse than spending a ton of money and then game changer technology drops right when you've passed your return window. But I have tasted how nice Apple products play with each other and I have to say that alone is worth a lot. I'm not even fully in the ecosystem yet and I wanna be, but because this Max costs so much money, I'd have no money left over to buy the iPhone or any of the other peripherals, not anytime soon anyway. If I bought an older generation, maybe M1, I would be able to afford some of those things. But again, it comes down to what my needs are and since I'm really focused on building my YouTube channels, I'm leaning towards keeping the Max for the job. And for you, do you need the Max? If you're just starting out or want a future-proof computer to do most things, the Pro is great. Really consider your needs. Oh yeah, I wanted to compare gaming more on these, but I just couldn't get a lot of games to work on them. Rocket League installed, but it didn't work. The same with Counter-Strike. Hearthstone runs great. I got Path of Exile working and it runs great also. The gaming is nice on both of these, but the options are limited with what you can play. So there you have it. Hopefully you got something out of the video. 
I still have over a month left on the return window. I will probably bring back the Pro for sure. Then we'll be left figuring out if this really is my dream computer because for the price, I could build a desktop and buy another laptop. <laughs> I'll do a more thorough review on the Max in the near future since I didn't test a lot of other things and effects. I just wanted to compare it to the Pro for average usage. Okay, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out this video next if you like watching comparison videos. Otherwise, maybe watch this one. See you next time on the Sad Studio. Yeah!